I was a little bit close to that reaper. Okay, we're going to be sticking out into the next lane. I want to take it easy here. So we got to clear that fence. Oh, didn't clear the fence. Okay, we ended our last delivery in Redding, California. So let's go pick another one. Another load. <coughs> well, now here's one that goes up to Lakeview, Oregon. That's actually not very far. Although it covers some pretty scenic territory. Um, where else? Kind of want to go. You know what? We should probably head back to Reno. <coughs> Ooh, I don't want to go that way. Kaya. Oops, that's Sacramento. Don't want a deadhead to Sacramento. Reading to Truckee. I could see doing that. Uh, well, there's one to Medford. I like that, except for all these twisty, turny stuff. That's all right. I really wish I had a steering wheel to handle those all those curves. But let's go to Medford. Well, hold on. Let me see what else we got. Um, well, let me make sure I'm reading only. Okay. Lakeview, Truckee, Reno, uh, Medford. That's our preferred one at this point in time. Well, it's my preferred one at this point in time. Uh, Bend. I kind of like Bend. Um, but let's just stick with that first one. Medford. Here we go. Let's take that job. I didn't even see what kind of truck it was. So we're hauling vegetables from Reading to Medford. Hmm. Okay, we gotta head out that way. Let's see what kind of truck we got here. <coughs> hey, Peterbilt Bullnose. I think that's what they call those. I like that chrome. So, we need to head out that away, turn right, and head that away. Let's do it. Do we have the brakes on? Nope. Oh, you know what? Got to put it in gear first. By the way, how much are we hauling here? 40,000 pounds. I guess that was on that screen. I could have looked at it. Ooh, I was a little bit close to that reefer. Okay, we're going to be sticking out into the next lane. I want to take it easy here. Because we got to clear that fence. Oh, didn't clear the fence. All right, let's pull forward a little bit first. Buddy, you're gonna have to back up. Come on. Well, maybe I can make it. Well, that was not fun. <laughs> Once again, just like real life, I've had situations like that. 
I should have uh, I should have been set up to pull out of that gate a little better. All right, we're gonna get up here and we're gonna turn right. I have new mail. to get to that later. I'm not going to drive dis any more distracted than I already am. Alright, we have 169 miles to go. Should get a good view of Mount uh, the Mount Shasta. Yeah, Mount Shasta. Plus Lake Shasta. Oops, speeding again. Control set at 55. <coughs> now I didn't mention in the last video, you, you may have noticed if you watched the last video, and I'll be doing it again today, that i um, doing a lot of coughing, um, or some. I just got over COVID a couple of weeks ago. And I got this residual cough. It's driving me nuts. I feel great. I mean, I felt horrible when I had COVID. <clears throat> you know, mostly just blah. You know? Because it was just not fun. I had uh, something that my daughter calls COVID brain, which is like brain fog. And I just couldn't concentrate on anything. Anytime I, you know, I didn't work on any videos, hardly at all. I just felt horrible. Well, it's a little late in the evening. We're not going to get to see much. I didn't realize that. Oh, that helps. But I was uh, kind of out of commission for a good two weeks. Went through a period of, um, when it first started, went through a period of, uh, uh, what is it, um, fever chills? Went to bed, I had to, I had to go to work. It was a Wednesday night, I had to work Thursday. And um, now there's something I haven't talked about in a while. What I'm doing lately. Anyway, we'll do that another, another time. Um, so I had to go to work Thursday morning. I went to bed Wednesday night at regular time. I think about 8.30 ish. I woke up at 11.30. Just dripping in sweat. And. I should have called in, even though even though it was really really late. But I had to go pick up a load uh, for work. I had to go pick up a load here in town, and uh, it was really late at night. And I didn't want to, you know, bail the last second because you know otherwise they wouldn't have ooh wouldn't have been able to cover that load. So I got up the next morning, felt horrible, 
and um, went to work. I was moving slow. I got there late. So I got to the shipper late. Had to wait around. And I just felt horrible. So while I was getting loaded, I called my boss and told her that, you know, what was going on. I said, look, I am, I am sick. I need to just bring this back. As soon as I get loaded, I need to bring this back to the yard and go home. And so that's what I did. That was Thursday, three weeks ago now, and uh, I think. And uh, <clears throat> went home, slept, well, off and on I slept because I had fever chills. And uh, she had me go take a uh, COVID test Friday. Yeah, Friday, she set it up and came back positive, was not surprised. And uh, that weekend, I was miserable. I had one of the worst sore throats I have had in a long time. I couldn't talk, or I didn't want to talk. Um, oh, I'm going fast again. Um, and I was surprised, Sunday afternoon I started feeling better, and by Monday, my throat had stopped hurting. Usually when you, when you get that type of a upper respiratory issue, oh, and by the way, I'm pretty sure I had Omicron, um, so it wasn't that bad, although I had it worse than other people, because I, I probably shouldn't share this, but I haven't been vaccinated. I'm just not getting that thing. And uh, so other people at work who were all vaccinated, they had it. But they didn't have it as bad as I did. So I was not surprised at that. So if nothing else, the vaccination at least helps you not be as sick. Or the, the symptoms are not as severe. So anyway, um, I'm not anti-vax, I'm just anti-this-vax. So, um... Ooh. So by Monday, I was feeling better, my throat stopped hurting, and I felt like I, you know, talking again, and it actually surprised me. So, but I, you know, I went the next week and a half just feeling it. Oh, what I was going to say is normally when you get an upper respiratory thing like this that gives you a really bad sore throat, it usually, you know, you, you know, moves up into your upper sinuses and, you know, you get stuffed sinuses. And I did have a little bit of congestion, but it was nowhere near as bad as I would normally get. Ooh, I like that. Sauce. Uh, but, you know, I still had the brain fog and... Um, you know, other things which were not fun. And, uh, yeah, Oregon. Oh, we got 35 miles. Been yakking so much, I didn't pay attention. So, you know, it eventually started clearing up. But that, that brain fog kind of hung on. Like, I was going to go, I was gonna go back to work like two weeks after I was first sick so like Thursday two weeks later but I just I begged off I said I just don't feel that well and I you know I was worried about making mistakes which you don't want to do as a truck driver that's why you need to get lots of rest so um, but I went into work the following Monday and I felt fine or relatively, except I still have this cough. Now it's been a week and a half since I went back to work. And, or no, I'm sorry, I went in that Saturday. They usually work weekends. Uh, but they really needed some help on that Saturday. So I went in, but then I worked 11 hours. Which <laughs> killed me. <laughs> so, uh, See, is this the exit? It is. Uh, let me just put that uh, that off for a little bit while I focus on 
nailing this exit and delivery. I'll pick this back up in a little bit. You know, every one of these trucks I drive, well, you know, and end up being a, an employee, an employee here, they're all different, which is not unusual, which is not unlike my current job. I, I'm driving day cabs locally here in Las Vegas, and they've got a mishmash of, of different vehicles. You know, Max, International, Freightliners. And uh, some days, I'm, well, a lot of times I'm just driving different vehicles. Not all on the same day. But, you know, Monday I may drive one type of truck, and then Tuesday, well, not Tuesday, but Wednesday I might be driving a different kind of truck. So, kind of aggravating. I try to keep and keep driving just the same truck whenever I can. It's not always possible. I'll talk some more about that in another video. Or if I do another live, YouTube live. I haven't done one of those in a long time. So, we need to be in the left lane. Sorry for cutting you off, buddy. Big truck, come through. <laughs> oh, I can't see the doggone light. I'm not even going to bother adjusting the seat in this because I'm only driving it for it until I get down the street. And I'll be in something else. Oh, there we go. Head bit. Do it up there on the left. going to be interesting. I can't turn left. Plus, I think it's blocked. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to come back here and we're going to get situated. So our, our tail end of the trailer is going to be pointing to the left. Yep, I gotta back into that dock right there. So, <laughs> and that, there's a van in the way. Now this is a pretty long wheelbase truck, so that's gonna make it more difficult. We'll just have to nose into the corner. Actually, this isn't as bad as I was expecting. Alright, let's use the mirrors. Oh, I need to look back there.
Oh, I keep doing that. Turn the wheel the wrong way when I'm looking for my... Oops! Come on. There we go. i to use the steer tires to get the end of the trailer pointed in the direction you want it to go. It's counterintuitive. But with some practice, you can do it. Yeah, I was going to use this extra space back there by that forklift to try and make this work. Yeah, this is, doing this at night is even harder than during the day. And on my tractor, I had, you know, rearward facing lights on the wings, but it helped a little. Sometimes just wasn't enough, but it was better than nothing. Alright, this will be it. Should really be using the mirrors. I don't want to be going too fast and ram into that wall. Alright, drop this trailer and call this done. Alright, $3,900. And we're going up to level 2. Alright, so what do we want to do next? Um... Let's add a little bit to the, I want to do long distance because it's going to give me more miles. Currently, we can only take loads up to 250 miles. If I do this, if I add a skill point to my long distance, then um, I can take loads up to 400 miles, which opens up a lot of options. Let's see, we can't do hazmat yet for some reason. Why not? Probably have to do something else first. That's okay. Well, let's just stick with, um, I'm going to keep these short for now. And um, let's add a skill point to fragile cargo. And now let's check that mail. Drivers with own equipment needed. We are looking for skilled drivers with their own trucks for a large number of deliveries. We offer competitive rates up to $10,200 for a job. That's for um, that's a gallon oil and redding. All right. Keep that in the back of the mind. Special transports. Okay, I'm not going to get in. Well, I'll read it. Okay. I have something special for you. Thanks to our connections, we're now able to get to a real challenge. Some special extra large and heavy cargoes need to be hauled by a true professional. It won't be easy and it'll require some skills, patience, cooperation with escorting vehicles, and extra care. But I guess you have it all, right? Also, bigger risk comes with a bigger profit. If you're interested, you can visit these cities, blah, blah, blah. Okay, I'm not going to worry about that right now. But I do want to see, where do we stand on money? Almost 13000 
what can we do? What does the bank say? We can still only borrow up to $130,000. Um, that puts me at 142. Yeah, that's just not enough. I want to get up closer to 200,000. Okay, let's look at the world map for just a minute and see how things are looking. Um, we've explored like 1.29% of the map. That's nothing. <laughs> That's okay. Well, over time, that'll, that'll uh, fill in. All right. Now, let's look at the job market. Make sure that we're looking at a Reading or Medford, rather. There we go. Let's see. We could go to Bend. That would be an interesting one. We could go to. Oh, that's also Bend. I kind of like that. It's good money. What's the stars? I forget what the stars are. Oh, high value cargo. Cool. Uh, that goes to Salem. It's just rolling up I-5. I like that. Let's take that job. Because that's going to put us within reach of... From here. Uh, even at 250 miles, we can, we can get up probably up to Seattle, at least Tacoma or Olympia. And bend. All right, let's take that job. We're hauling a wheel loader. I didn't even look at what the cargo was. We're hauling a wheel loader from Medford to Salem. Okay, so we're at a... Like, dirt lot or something. Construction place. Alright, wheel loader. Okay, we need to get turned around. Can I do that by going forward? There we go. Oh, just lit up somebody's be bedroom. Bedroom. Can't talk. At 10 minutes before midnight. I'm sure they appreciate that. Yeah, that's one reason why I just really didn't like doing very many nighttime runs. I mean, I didn't mind driving at night. Especially if I was, you know, headed from one place to another. The traffic was awfully, you know, a lot lower. Uh, a lot less congested in the cities. It was my preferred time of day to travel through places like <laughs> Columbus, Ohio, or much of anywhere. But I don't like maneuvering shippers and receivers at night unless the place was well lit which unfortunately so many times it was not all right we need to turn left what are you guys doing out almost midnight or well it's after midnight already Okay, turn left or right down here. Freightliners are nice trucks. I've driven a few. The last one that I leased, I had nothing but trouble with it. Which is unfortunate because I actually liked the truck. But I couldn't wait to get out of it because it just hadn't kept it was a lemon. Just had issues. And I got it new. One electrical problem after another. Man, this feels like a rat maze trying to get out of here.
looks like. Oops, the yeah, that's a garage. It's someone's garage. So if I wanted to be based out of Medford, that might be where I would be at. Let's make sure we're stopping. Johnny Law keeping an eye on us here. Nice looking truck. For a steering wheel. I think I probably need to get in the right lane. <laughs> All of a sudden we got a bunch of traffic in the right lane. See, that never happens in real life. We're going to get on I-5 northbound. You know, in real life, I never made any deliveries. I don't think I ever made any deliveries in Medford or even pickups. Drove through here plenty of times. You know, on the freeway. turn it on or off, it, you have to go cycle through the, uh, the different cycles. Intermittent, normal, fast, off. Whoa! What did I do? I somehow went the wrong way. Whoa! Oh, son of a gun. I was trying to avoid that. A lot of crap coming over there. So what did I... I, I got, I'm at a loss as to what I did wrong. Let me look at the map. Uh, I think I lost situational awareness. And went the wrong way. I don't know how I did that. Or maybe that was the wrong way. Be lunchtime soon. Looks like I'm gonna need it. Hope it's not COVID. Fog, brain fog still. Anyway, go back to that. So I went went back to work on a Saturday and then worked 11 hours. Crazy. Um, 
Then I was off on Sunday. Then I worked on Monday. I had another long day. I think I worked another 11 hours. Crazy. Um, in fact, unintentional. This is a part-time job, but I got 40 hours in that next week, which is crazy. But I felt really good. I felt really good to be out, being active. Um, whoops. Uh, excuse me. Um, doing trucking stuff. Felt really good. Most of the time. <laughs> I do a lot of sitting around waiting sometimes in this particular job. And... Uh, Sometimes I would want to just take a nap, but it's hard to do that in a day cab. Come on, tour bus, why are you going so slow? See, we still have 212 miles to go. Whoa, I need to back off of this guy. Man. Give him some space. Pay attention to what I'm doing. So, yeah, feel better. But I still got this whatever in my throat. I don't have a sore throat. I haven't had a sore throat since I only had a, I only had a sore throat the first few days. Still got, I guess it must be a little bit of congestion. Now yeah, maybe you can hear it in my voice. Oh, you know something else that I experienced while I was sick is it's not that so much that I lost my appetite and I guess you could call it that but it, I actually got nauseous when I ate I mean the things that I enjoyed eating made me nauseous I didn't I didn't want to eat but I had to eat because of course I was hungry or you know when I would get hungry but I just did not enjoy it now, I enjoy eating food that's one of my pitfalls um, but I did not enjoy eating when I was sick with COVID so I knew I was over it when I was couldn't wait to eat I wanted to eat spicy food <laughs> a lot Well, that was weird. I made that cruise control. So I wanted, I, I've been wanting to eat spicy food, and I've wanted, been wanting to be more active. But both good, I mean, I like spicy food, so. But being active was good. I'm not active right now, obviously. I'm sitting on my butt playing this. Oh, come on, dude. Just lost all my momentum. Definitely need to get a steering wheel. Alright, I'm gonna stop saying that.
So I'll, t I'll talk a little bit about, uh, since we have 147 miles to go, I'll talk a little bit about this part-time job that I've got here in Las Vegas. Um, I haul show freight. Not to be confused with show girls. <laughs> no, sure, no show girls involved unless they're driving trucks or forklifts. <laughs> anyway, um, oh, we got a way station coming up. Let's see what happens here. I always got pulled into this one if it was open. Let's see. Yep. No, I got a bypass. Yay, me. So, show freight. Las Vegas is known for all the trade shows that we have here at the convention centers. We've got the Las Vegas Convention Center, the Sands Convention Center, the Palazzo has a convention center, Mandalay Bay has a convention center, Paris, Caesars, all these places have trade shows. And some of them have trade shows like the Conve Las Vegas Convention Center, like every weekend, or every week, rather, almost. Except in December. Ooh, I'm gonna slow down here. So I haul. All right, we're, I'm working part time for a company that contracts with exhibitors or their coordinators to haul their freight to and from the convention centers uh, for their booths. Sometimes they're small booths. Sometimes they're big ones. All different kinds of stuff. This, uh, yes, I worked yesterday. Yeah. So I was hauling some, I don't know, lighting equipment or something into, well, it doesn't matter what I was hauling, but I was bringing stuff in and the, the show, and I didn't know what it was until I got there and I asked the Somebody, but you know, what kind of road? Oh, jeez. Yeah, this is just like real life sometimes. Um, I asked them, you know, well, what kind of show is this? And she said it was a uh, uh, marijuana uh, industry show. And I'm like, oh, okay. Didn't know that. Because I don't pay attention to what's happening as far as trade shows. But the previous week, there was a related one, a tobacco show, a lot of uh, cigars and other things tobacco related, you know, vaping, but also some marijuana stuff at the other show. So I had been involved in pulling stuff out of the convention center for that trade show. And uh, so usually what happens is I'm involved with bringing stuff to the convention center over the weekend, like Friday, Saturday, Sunday, for a particular show. And then after the show is over, then I'm usually involved in bringing stuff out. Taking it to a warehouse or an exhibitor company. There's a lot of, uh, there's like a whole cottage industry here in the Las Vegas Valley that serves this uh, trade show business, like, you know, conventions. It's actually quite fascinating. And there are, there are companies that build these booths for exhibitors. And either they build the whole booth or they'll build different parts of it, like millwork and things. And then there's companies that specialize in lighting. So, if, like for a big booth, they may have these all these light rigs, lighting rigs, overhead to light up all the different things that they need lit up. And then there's other companies that specialize in sound equipment, and whatever. It's actually quite fascinating. So some companies ship stuff in from all over the country or even all over the world for these convention centers and they come in, they get delivered locally to a warehouse or whatever and then I may be involved with going over there to pick it up at that warehouse and then deliver it to the convention center. So it's actually kind of fascinating. 
So we drive these these uh, tractor trailer rigs, and again, I, I drive a day cab here for this for this job, and we drive them right into the convention center hall. Kind of neat. Oops, we got something going on up here. Oh, we are getting off. Yikes, this is not good. Now we've got to figure out how to get back on. I mean, the, the GPS will do it, but... Oh, this is going to take us out of route a bit. Not cool. Anyway, uh, we drive right into these convention halls with our rigs. And then the company, the people that work for the company that runs, you know, manages the in and outs, they load us or unload us depending on what we're doing. And then we head out. Exit onto Coburg Road and we're going to turn left at the bottom of this off ramp. And then we're going to get back on. I think I've actually got off on this exit in real life. Loop-de-loo of some type. Keep to the left because we're headed towards Portland. Where are we going? I already forgot. Uh, Salem, yes. So in the options configuration, I, I think I dialed back the number of times that that type of thing happens, where there's some accident or road construction, something that throws you off the freeway. <coughs> When I first started playing this, it, it got aggravating because it just seemed like every run something would happen. And like I was coming into Southern California from Phoenix, and I'd get, I don't know where it was, but I'd wind up getting, it's been Mira Loma, I'd wind up getting thrown off because there's an accident or something, and I'd get thrown off, I was on I. 10, I think. Yeah, like 10. And I'd get thrown off and I'd have to divert and then drive south all the way to San Diego before I could pick up Interstate 5. And uh, I guess we're getting off here. Pick up Interstate 5 to head all the way back up to LA. That was annoying. That got old. Whoa. So, when I fired this back up again to make videos, I decided to dial that back a bit. So we're getting 
getting really close. Daylight, 6.36 a.m. I prefer daylight. This is a dead end. <laughs> well, I guess we're making delivery at the end somewhere up here. Speeding again. What kind of place? Ooh, Salem has been discovered. Awesome. What kind of place is this? Uh, coastline mining. arrived. Alright, looking for the green flashing target thingy. Should be up here on the left. There it is. Turn up, turn to the right to get to it. All right, where do you want it? Uh, I gotta back it in to somewhere on the right. Oh, they're right over there. Like we're gonna have to do a bit of a blind side back. Get, get the four ways on. Alright, there's somebody standing there, he'll be judging us. <laughs> okay, we gotta get the trailer pointed in the right direction. All right, let's uh, do a cheap peek here. Yeah, these barriers over here to the right of the screen, which is on our left side, those are going to be a bit of a problem. I really should have pulled up over here next to that trailer. So I guess we'll do that. Well, I don't know, maybe. No, we're fine. Yeah, we'll just back in there, pull up and get it straight, and we'll be golden. Be sure to watch how my, you know, how I manipulate my steer tires to get the trailer to do what I want.
and also watch the mirrors. See what it looks like. in try to keep it inside the box there we go all right We already jumped up to level three. Awesome. So we get to add another skill point to something. Uh, just in time delivery. Let's see. Sometimes companies need to deliver something important quickly, so they call for a just in time job. Such work puts more stress on the driver. The delivery window is tighter, but the compensation eases your level of discomfort. A new rank in this skill will result in. Plus 3% higher reward for finishing an important delivery. Plus 20% experience bonus for finishing an important delivery. Well, okay, let's go with that. Oh, I got new mail. We can help you grow. That's from the bank. We couldn't help but notice your steady earnings, and we would like to assist you with developing your potential even further. Your credit limit has been raised to $500,000. Feel free to draw from the available sum anytime at your local bank center. Well, thank you. Yep, I can borrow up to one or up to $500,000. Well, now we can get into a tractor, but I don't want to do it here. Let's look at the world map. Okay, we've explored 2%. So I need to find a Kenworth dealer. Right now, the only one I'm aware of is an Elko. So we could actually jump there. Uh, where are we going here? Okay, truck dealers. Yeah, I could set it up. You know what? Not yet. Let's save that for the next video where we'll get into a truck. So uh, that's enough for today. Thanks a lot for coming along. And uh, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already subscribed, you've been watching this long, why not just subscribe? All right. Until we meet again, thanks. And look at this monster we got on, on this articulated trailer assembly. I can't just pull forward and turn left. I'm right up against this building. And so I can't make the turn. So this is what we're going to do. Um, I can back up. a little bit.